Hello folks, soon to be folks. Good to see you on this Thursday. Soon, good to be seeing you on this Thursday. <laughs> as soon as we get someone to log on. A little bit uh, later than I have been the last few weeks. Eight o'clock Central, nine o'clock Eastern. We've got our buddy Rodney Griffin that'll be with us here in just a little bit. Man, that'll be good. Love Rodney. Just love him. Love his singing, love his writing. Love who he is. Love Rodney. Well, let me do a few of my pitches here, and then we'll get into some of our... Uh, we're still in the 2010 December issue of Singing News Fan Awards. <coughs> Excuse me. And we will um, be... Uh, will we be concluding? No, uh, tomorrow we will conclude the uh, winners of the Singing News Fan Awards from 2010. Today we've got uh, three categories. We're going to look at favorite trio, favorite songwriter, and favorite album. So uh, we'll just uh, see all about that. Hey, Brother John, good to see you. I'm not surprised to see you tonight. You saw Rodney was going to be with me, and you were like, I'm going to even go in the back of the church and turn this on if I'm preaching <laughs> and watch. <laughs> so uh, good to see you, Brother John. Hello, Jimmy, and whoever else is on, and Chuck, and my Aunt Sue, and whoever else is on. Hey to everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Um, okay, so uh, let me get some of the pitches out of the way. Um, as we speak, this is still on. Uh, got with the uh, owner of the event that I'm working with, <clears throat> and we are on for Christmas Camp Meeting in the Smokies. We're going we're gonna to eat, and we're going to preach, and then we're going to eat, then we're going to sing, then we're going to eat, we're going to preach, and then we're going to eat. <laughs> and we want you to be a part of it. Look at all those folks there, and uh, we get a little bit closer. I think we're going to try to add some more even. But Old Time Preachers Quartet, myself, Barry Rowan and Deliverance, Sherry Taylor and uh, Sacred Harmony and Bob Sellers and um, Paul Bolin and Covenant and Chelsea Estes, all going to be a part of it. And here's the number. Let me give you the number to call. 865-278-3681. 865-278-3681. Right there. And uh, so we want to get, get your senior adult class, your Sunday school class. What a, what a perfect thing to do in the Smokies during Christmas. I'm telling you, that would be the ticket right there. Okay, get ready to write down this phone number. And um, Brother John has already called in. So Brother Hamlin, thank you for that. But I need everybody else, like uh, Jimmy Hayes had just put in. Jimmy, I need you to write down this number for me, 800 Three six zero five zero five one. Did you write it down? Eight hundred three six zero five zero five one. Patty, did you write it down? After after our program tonight, I want you to call it eight hundred three six zero five zero five one. Ian, good to see you. Write down this number eight hundred three six zero five zero five one. Uh, toll free. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to answer this question. Call. That's my radio hotline number. I want you to call it. And here you go. I want you to vote in this category. Tell me who you think is going to win in the Singing News Fan Awards for 2020 in the Favorite Musician category. And those five include, thank you, Adam and Angel, and thank your pastor for getting me this fine shirt. Uh, Kim Collingsworth of the Collingsworth family. Gordon Moat, soloist. Andy Stringfield of the Kingdom Heirs. Legacy Five of uh, Josh Townsend of Legacy Five. And Gerald Wolf of Greater Vision. 800-360-5051. Would you be kind enough to call my radio hotline and answer that question? And I want to know who you think they missed that should have been in the favorite musician category. Give me your name, too. Uh, let's see. Here's something else. Uh, I would appreciate it greatly. You've got today. Uh, what is today? You've got to the 15th. I think to, so today, tomorrow, um, and Saturday to go online to uh, Scoops Magazine and vote in this year's Diamond Awards. Now, here's why I want you to do it. There's some folks that I produce and manage and work with within my company <coughs> that are up for these awards. And so I want you to vote for them. It would be, and they're great folks, wonderful people, and it'd be a blessing to them. And uh, we work hard together, and uh, it would just be a blessing. So if you'd be that kind... Go to Scoops Magazine online. Just Google Scoops Magazine. 
there on the main page, it'll say Diamond Awards. Click on that. And then in all the categories, when you see Williamson, the Williamsons, they're up for four different awards. Lisa and uh, is up for uh, an award and then the Williamsons. So the Williamsons, four awards. And Heart to Heart, they are up for two. And they're not in the same category, so you can vote for them. And then um, uh, Heaven's Mountain Band is up for five Bluegrass Gospel categories. And yours truly, well, I'm up for two for the Broadcaster of the Year and for the um, Old Man Award, the Living Legend Award. <laughs> so uh, I guess the only prerequisite is that you've been in gospel music at least 42 years and you're old because if it's, if it's anything qual qualifiable beyond that, I, I wouldn't have made it. But um, So anyway, I'm up for two. Heaven's Mount Band up for five. Williamson's up for four. Heart to Heart up for two. Please go online. Scoops Magazine, the Diamond Awards. You've got today, tomorrow, Saturday. And then uh, if all goes well and the, uh, the charts go, go out on the date that they're supposed to, on Monday, we'll see where these happy-faced fellas land in the Singing News and Scoops Magazine chart. Currently number four in the singing news, number 10 in uh, scoops. And uh, this will be the month that it will either go up or it'll go be going out, one of the two. So uh, we'll see. But uh, come on now. That is, that's a sharp-looking, happy-faced quartet right there. Come on now. <laughs> oh, look here. Mike Colcom is green around the gills. Check out Brother Mike, green around the gills. All right, well, that's it for all of our stuff. So now we're going to go to the uh, uh, this issue right here, the December 2010 issue of Singing News Magazine, which is the first issue that uh, I was blessed to be the publisher uh, of the magazine. Had worked with them for 10-plus years prior to that, doing other things, writing and all kinds of stuff. But um, ran the magazine starting with this issue here. And so one of the things that was in this issue was the pictorial and the breakdown of the 2010 Singing News Fan Awards. And I've been featuring all of the winners, and we're going to do that tonight. Matter of fact, we're gonna, right now we're going to go to the group that won Favorite Trio in 2010. And we're going to play an obscure cut from them. The winner was the Booth Brothers. And I am going to play an old hymn of the church from the Booth Brothers. I'm going to do it right here, right now, and I know you know it. So why don't you just sing along with the Booth Brothers on this great old hymn of the church called Softly and Tenderly. Jesus is calling. And by the way, good news today. He's still calling. Amen. The Booth Brothers. Facebook Live with Les. So
church softly and tenderly. I just wonder how many lost souls have walked the aisle to a church, a singer, a group, a choir, singing softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. That's a song that has stood the test of time. Love that. Love that. Well, let's see who all's on here with us right now. Hey, Carol Garrett Skeens from Florida. Good to see you. Hey, ask, uh, uh, ask Dwight if, uh, well, I don't have it here with me, but it's sometime in October. I think the last Sunday of October, we had a cancellation the quartet did, and we might be able to pull off coming to your all's church the last Sunday in October. So ask uh, Brother Dwight if that would be of interest. And uh, I'll, I'll go back and see if what's going on. But anyway, ask, and if I'm wrong, we'll figure out some other date. Brother Mark Stroud, good to see you, sir. God bless you. Scott Matthews, evening, Brother Les. Evening, Brother Scott. Well, we got all kinds of, of uh, nice folk that I know that's on here. Brian Hoffman, good to see you. Roger Cruz, Adam and Angel, yeah. Hey, hey, uh, Brother Mark, check it out. Right here, your shirt. I'm wearing it. It's my favorite shirt. I'm telling you, I wear them all the time during the summer because they're so comfortable. All right, let's see what we're going to do here next. I've got, uh, this has two discs. Well, that's weird. No, it's just one disc, but it looks like there's two. Okay, so we're looking at the 2010 Singing News Fan Awards. <coughs> In the next category we're going to look at here, favorite album was the Jubilee album, which, of course, is Greater Vision, Legacy 5, and the Booth Brothers. So I've got that very album right here, and I am going to play song number seven. You want to know why I'm playing? I'm going to play it first, and then you tell me why you think I'm playing it. Because for those who know me and know this song, they'll know why I'm playing it. So uh, here you go. This is from the album, album of the year, Jubilee by Greater Vision, Legacy 5, and the Booth Brothers. If you know it, sing along with them. It's called Better Hurry Up. I hear that all the time. Christ has gone on. John won. Brother John won. Yes, he did. He knew why I was playing the Jubilee version. Better hurry up because it was a happy Goodman hit. And so you know I'm going to play that one. <laughs> and a matter of fact, not only a happy Goodman hit, but I liked that one so much from the Goodmans that I named 
my publishing company with BMI, are you ready for this? Hurry up publishing, BMI. <laughs> I love it. Did I get a hat, Les Butler? Yes, sir. I'll go in my closet and I'll find a hat for you. It'll be funny too. All right, now let's do this. Oh, I'm, I've got, I got so excited on that better hurry up, I forgot to do what I was going to do. I was going to call Rodney Griffin, my guest for today. So now I've got to do this. Hold on just a minute here. Are you holding on? There's Jay Wilburn. He's on. Who else is on with us? Brother John, Linda Presnell, John Rouse, Jimmy Hayes. Carol, don't forget to ask um, Dwight about that last Sunday in October. All right, here we go. I'm trying to. Trying to call Rodney Griffin here real quick. Everybody hang on. Let's see if I got it going on here. Hello. Is this Rodney Griffin? It is. Let me get this, my speaker going here. I use my wife's phone and I'm not used to it. Are you there? I'm here. There we go. Good to, good to hear from you, Brother Rodney. Are you doing okay? Doing fantastic. How are you, Les? I'm doing great. My, my aunt can't remember coronavirus. She calls it the Conrad virus. Are you running away from the Conrad virus? The Conrad. <laughs> so far, so good. So far, we've not had anybody in the house that has had to deal with this. So. Amen. Good. Kind of crazy. It is. So you've been, uh, you've been home more than you've probably been your entire career. Is that assumption correct? Yeah, I think uh, Regina and I have spent more time this year together than in the other 25 years we were married. <laughs> yeah. Combined? Yeah. Hey, we're still hanging in there. Still got a great marriage, so uh, that's pretty good, I guess. That's good, that's good. <laughs> Well, listen, Brother Rodney, I'm doing uh, on my Facebook Live with Les, I call it Facebook Live with Les, Southern Gospel Music, Memorabilia, Memories, and Ministry. Yes. And, and I'm working out of the December 2010 issue of the Singing News, which was, I, I had worked for the Singing News for like 11, 12 years prior to, to this, but that was the first issue that uh, we published with with yours truly is the publisher of the magazine. So just for memorabilia's sake and memory's sake, I've been working off of this one. And uh, in that issue, the 2010 Singing News Fan Awards, all the winners are listed. And I see here, I'm going to just quickly uh, touch on a, a few of these here that would, uh, that would include you. And that would be favorite songwriter would be you. And then you were part of the favorite album. And, uh, and that's uh, what I just played. I played part of the favorite album, which was Jubilee, which was you all and uh, Booth Brothers and Legacy Five. And, yes. and that's a great record. You know what? Here's a question I have for you. Out, outside of Greater Vision, you also do, you know, you've had the Jubilee series. You've had the, you know, the you're doing the hymn sing and you're part of the second half quartet. So my question to you is outside of your day-to-day -day work with Greater Vision, which one of those other three entities really was just super fun or very uh, really rang your bell in some special way? And I'm sure you loved it all. I know you do. But was there one that really is like, wow? You know, there are several emotions that go with each of those. Yeah. Uh, the Jubilee Gang, uh, the emotion of camaraderie. We would all be sitting up there on the stage, and you never knew what uh, Michael Booth was going to say or Scott Fowler was going to do. And Gerald, you get them all together, and it just is crazy. Yeah. And crazy fun. So just the camaraderie, the laughs, uh, that emotion is evoked when I think about the Jubilee game. When I think about second half quartet, uh, just uh, standing there and singing with just uh, no soundtracks, just piano and bass, and uh, just harmonizing with uh, Mark Trammell and Pat Barker and Chris and uh, Gerald on the piano. Just uh, the emotion there is just uh, the memories of, of smooth quartet singing that I grew up hearing uh, before soundtracks uh, came into being. Yeah. So that was just extra special to get to do that. Uh, and then the hymn sings, uh, which continue, uh, wow, they're so far-reaching. Um, uh, my wife, 
Regina is the is the point person on mailing out the DVDs to the nursing homes all across the country. Right. And that has gone very well. So I have a lot of emotion attached to the him saying uh, concept. Uh, how it's so far reaching in the nursing homes and then when we get to do live concerts uh, we're there with all our friends on the stage and to hear these folks sing at the top of their lungs man i just get to sit there and enjoy it all so yeah yeah it's really hard to pick a favorite when i have so many uh, emotions involved in each of those understood understood that's a very good and thorough answer uh, the kind of answer I would have expected from Rodney Griffin. That was good. <laughs> uh, so uh, here's another question. Uh, you know, you, you have, um, uh, for the overwhelming majority of your professional career anyway, I don't know about your young career or as, uh, you know, growing up, but your professional career, you've been a baritone, and now all of a sudden you're out front. What's that like? Well, I'm just basically singing the same part that that I'd been singing um, all the all those years. Gerald Wolf was our lead singer, but he just rarely would feature himself. He just would hit such a big a baritone tone, and then he can go up and meh, <laughs> you know, champion of love. So yeah. he can do so much that. Uh, he would just, whatever sounded the best. When we were in the studio, we didn't say, okay, you're the this, you're the that, you're the lead, you're the baritone, you sing lead. No, it wasn't that. It was just, what is the best sound we can have here? Yeah. What is the, yeah. We just have three voices. What's the biggest sound we can have? And unless it was a real high song with power, uh, Gerald just elected to... Uh, take the bottom note and I would be in the middle between he and Chris so yeah so really that's what I'm still doing okay maybe, maybe as we record in the future uh, that that will change but I mean we've not seen any need to change it it feels very natural and John Epley coming in yeah and can do that same big tone uh, in the baritone and then he yeah. can take the lead as well so yeah uh, really uh not too much change as far as uh, just calling me the lead all of a sudden. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, you know, and uh, yeah, that's probably a good thing for the fans because it's a it's a pretty doggone consistent Greater Vision sound. Well, that's that's a good thing, I guess. Um, we we sang uh, Mark Trammell's Homecoming a couple weekends ago, and I believe it was Nick Trammell who. Of course, he was here when Greater Vision started with his dad being an original member. And Nick said, you know, what's, I believe it was Nick that said what is uh, neat about Greater Vision is that the original three, Mark, Gerald, Chris Allman, they could sing these current songs that you guys do because your style is still current, but it hasn't changed. Yeah. And uh, that, that's kind of neat how uh, I look at groups that seem to sustain through the years and they, they find something that works and they stick with it and uh, they stay current, uh, but there's a consistency there and uh, they keep the people that enjoy their, their type of music. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is, uh, uh, for those who are just tuning in, this is Rodney Griffin that I'm talking to of Greater Vision. And uh, one more thing here, Rodney, and I'll let you get back to your, uh, to your evening, and I appreciate you peeling off for a few minutes. But um, I, I have in my hand here your uh, recording with Greater Vision, uh, the, the entire album of Far Beyond This Place. And uh, you wrote on... Uh, it, this is called Facebook Live with Les, Southern Gospel Music, Memorabilia, Memories, and Ministry. And so I want you to take this last little section here, the little ministry moment, and maybe just talk a little bit about 
one of the songs that you wrote on this album or, uh, you know, maybe something that spurred uh, the thought that, that uh, ended up uh, being one of the songs. Like, it could be, my name is Lazarus, he washed my feet, he left it all, just one more soul. Um, you wrote, uh, you wrote those, you, you wrote uh, Far Be, no, you didn't write Far Beyond This Place, I'm sorry. Um, no, I didn't write that. And, and uh, I Believe and Just Pray. So of all of those songs that you wrote there, just take, I mean, you don't have to take a text, just a minute or two. And because uh, <laughs> I'm not going to take an offering up after this, so don't take a text. Um, but uh, talk about any one of those songs that you wrote. And then uh, after we hang up, I'm going to play it for the folks. Okay. Uh, of those, of course, that was an incredible album for us last year. Yes. Know, Budapest, Hungary. Uh, it was incredible. Uh, Just One More Soul has been far-reaching. They're still still singing it, uh, even in churches today. It's made its way into some hymn books, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, which has encouraged a lot of pastors. Uh, but if but if I had to pick a song on there that, that would make me cry the easiest, it would have to be He Washed My Feet. And uh, that's one of my favorite songs that is really uh, rare, not not well known. Uh, I wrote that when I was thinking about uh, the Last Supper and Judas facing Jesus. And Jesus knew Judas would be leaving to go betray him, yet he still bowed and he washed Judas' feet along with everyone else. Powerful. And that's just the kind of Savior he is. Powerful. Uh, he knows that we will fail him. He knows that we need a Savior. He knows we're imperfect. Yet he still chooses to serve us. He still chooses to die on the cross for our sin. My, my. And uh, uh, we'll never forget the day, Les, when you, I, those watching, those listening, just knelt and uh, we asked the Lord, to save us, and uh, and he he washed our spiritual feet and made us yeah. clean. And uh, I'll never forget that day. And it's certainly worth writing and singing about. Boy, yeah. And let me tell you, it was it's been worth me playing it all across the nation for all, all these twenty five plus years. And I have played that song that you're talking about. Um, multiple times. I know it wasn't a single, but that's okay. I'm, I do, I've always done what I wanted to do. And, <laughs> and, uh, I played it because it's powerful for the very reasons you just said. So brother Rodney, thank you, uh, for writing it. Thank you for your years of writing songs that, uh, have touched me. And I'd say millions of people very, very deeply. And, um, you are a, a blessing to many folks, myself included, and thank you for your time tonight. Thank you so much, Les. Thanks for having me on. I hope you have a wonderful program. Thank you, sir. God bless you, Brother Rodney. God bless you, brother. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Rodney Griffin, one of my just favorite people in Southern gospel music, that's for sure. So we are going to head to song number two, per Rodney's advice. He washed my feet. Powerful, powerful lyric. Well done by Greater Vision. The moment our eyes met, I knew this was the night that I would betray him. Precious Lamb of God, no other disciple was aware of my plan till he rose from the table with something in his hand, his holy eyes. Feeling all my sin, I knew his wrath was coming, and this would be the end. But he bowed and he walked. Oh, man.
but he's no worse than I. What a great true line right there. I gave in to Satan's compromise. Ungrateful that Jesus had saved me from hell. I was walking so proudly, and that's when I fell. Griffin, whom we were honored to talk to just a moment ago, as recorded by Greater Vision, on <clears throat> this is I, I, I believe I'm I'm sure actually when I say this, this has been their most uh, popular album, outselling anything they've ever done. But beyond all of that, this is hands down. It's not even close. And I love Greater Vision. I have. I have every note of every song that they've ever recorded, every one, and I listen to them frequently. Outside of the Goodmans and the Cathedrals, and a few of the class kind of classic things, I play more Greater Vision for my personal blessing and enjoyment than anybody, uh, any other group. And uh, if you do not have this record, you need to as soon as this show's over with. You got to figure out how to get it. And my favorite song on here, although not written by Rodney, but it, but Greater Vision, man, boy, they just sing it with such feeling and compassion and just deep in my soul, boy, it just drives deep, is the title song from this album called Far Beyond This Place. Now, the big song on here was My Name is Lazarus. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's right up there with... Amazing Grace and Beulah Land. Uh, it truly is. But um, a few weeks ago, you recall, I, I played Far Beyond This Place, man, and God just showed up in my office and whew, I preached a while and squalled a while and preached a while and squalled a while. And it was just a blessing. Uh, it'll just, it'll just, just bear down deep in your soul. Of course, just one more soul. It's, that's why I say this whole record, it's just one right after the other. Go get this tonight. Go online. Do whatever it is you got to do, but you've got to get this tonight. Far beyond this place, Greater Vision. Go to their website and buy it from them. It'll be a blessing to them in these uh, down days for all artists and all groups. It would be a blessing uh, to them for sure. Well, thank you again, Rodney Griffin. This is one of my favorite people in uh, in this Southern Gospel music world that I deal with and work with and have done so for 42 years. Very high on the list, Rodney Griffin. Let's see who else is with us, and then we'll call, uh, call her tonight. Beverly Owens, Miss Hugh, good to see you. Karen Lynch, Sue Wright, powerful. Yeah, Miss Sue. I hope you're doing all right, Miss Sue. God bless you. 
Patty Graham, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Larry Wolf, hello, Les, love Southern Gospel music. Scott, good to see you. Jay Wilburn, his goodness leads me to repentance. Boy, howdy. What about that? Amen. Uh, John Hamlin, oh, my. Yes. Oh, my. Gail Midkiff, Brother Jay, thank you, Jesus. Rodney's watching. Rodney, if you're still watching, again, thank you. Terry Smith, uh, Gene Thorne, Danny, Brother Stacy Piercy, Brother Stacy. You're a great writer. And uh, I talked to a great writer tonight on my show, Rodney Griffin. Sue Griffin, hello. Jason, Randy, Andy, Jeff Griffin, Terry Willits, Loretta Hall, Jeff Green, Glendon Phil, they're on here, Justin, Reba Ponders Queen, Daniel Albritton. I didn't play any banjo songs tonight, Daniel, I'm sorry. J. Michael Wilson. Thank you, folks. Hey, uh, hit the share button. Would you do that if you enjoyed uh, our time tonight here with Facebook Live with Les? Great program tonight. Thank you, Les Butler and Rodney Griffin. Singing that makes you smile, so your soul smile. Amen to that. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I like bringing that kind of a uh, program to, uh, to the World Wide Web, to the Facebook world. And uh, again, I say, folks, I'm working on uh, several things here that um, I think uh, if the Lord tarries, it's going to be, it's gonna be uh, good. You're going to enjoy some of the improvements and some uh, things that I'm physically working on and, and monetarily uh, working on. And, and to that end, if anyone sees fit to want to help with the monetary part, let me know. But uh, we're getting ready to ratchet some things up and uh, it's going to be good. You know, I feel good about where the Lord's lead me on it, so I'm plowing through. So pray for me, okay? All right, um, Lord willing, we will see you tomorrow night, and we will feature the Marvin Norcross uh, Templeton Award winner, the favorite artist of the year, and the song of the year. All of that coming your way if the Lord tarries tomorrow. God bless you all. We'll see you then.